These are three championship belts that are going to be given to the winners of the biggest trout, the biggest redfish, and the biggest snook. I'm here on the west coast of Florida, and I'm going up against some of the internet's best fishermen. Now, you say that loosely because I'm not really sure if they're the best, and I'm not sure that I qualify to be here. But over the next two days, we're going to be challenged to try and catch the biggest of each of these species of fish, and we're taking you guys along for the journey. Oh, clobbered <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning, man. What's up? Morning, not much. Yeah, for those of you that don't know who this is, this is Matthew. He is known as Bama Beach Bum Online. Yes. He rode in last night. Now he's trying Th to snag a boat with the top water. water. I can't, it's like <laughs> my eyes aren't awake yet. I can't even freaking see right now. But we are on the Salt Strong boat today. We have, are with the owners of Salt Strong, Luke and Joe. I'll introduce you to them in a second. But we are competing against everyone. I think it's just kind of like a, you know, um, every man for himself. We're trying to catch the biggest snook, the biggest trout, the biggest redfish. We'll see you guys out there. Hopefully we're gonna catch some awesome fish. So the fam over at Salt Strong decided that they were gonna invite myself and a bunch of other goobers that take videos of themselves fishing over for this competition. We all set out with high hopes, but none of us had really ever fished this water before. So I was deferring to the knowledge of Luke here, one of the owners of Salt Strong who has fished this area before. And that's why I was very willing to hop on his boat. So we are fishing on the west coast of Florida. We're kind of near like Boca Grande Pass, if you guys are familiar with that, the legendary tarpon grounds. But this area, never fished it before, looks extremely fishy. Tons of seagrass, tons of birds diving, tons of bait, dolphins, manatees, just seeing a lot of life. It honestly reminds me of what the Indian River Lagoon looked like on the east coast of Florida like 20 years ago. Uh, we're pulling up to the very first spot now kind of have this little island chain and we're gonna throw a bunch of different baits. I'm gonna start with some top water, see if I can get some type of top water action. I'm gonna start out with this little moonwalker here by Salt Strong. See what we can pull up. Oh we're schooled up. Look at that chump slick we got going on. Oh yeah. Oh, clobbered it. We got jumping trout. Dude he, got it. Dude, he jumped too. Oh my gosh, that was epic. That thing hammered it, son. That was amazing. On the board, baby. On the board. On the board. All right, you're going to rip off, I know. I know how you guys are. All right, guys. Oh, they hit it. They hit it. Come on. I just wet my hands, but that is a beautiful little sea trout to start the morning. They're a little bit more on the fragile side, so get that moonwalker out of his face real quick. Boop. Later, buddy. What did Brent say? See you, dude. Good job, Ryan. Thanks, Matt. It means, it means a lot. I got him, I mean, working off this oyster bar. Look at all this rain bait. Oh, we're on! Smoke the moonwalker! Take that, Bass Pro! <laughs> Just kidding, if you want to sponsor one of my videos. <laughs> Just hit me up in the emails. Yeah! Check that out, y'all. Trout number two. We got three trout in the boat right now. Look at that guy. They're such cool fish. Not the hardest fighters, but man, they are a beautiful. I wish and I could catch a fish. They're aggressive. Just get up here on the front of the boat, my friend. I'm still I'm stealing all the good spots from you. Okay, I'll, I'll You're such a nice guy that you're just like, I'll just fish in the back of the boat. I came here to see all you beautiful people. Catching fish is just a bonus, but oh. trout on top water right. is a good time. Fun fact. These actually aren't trout. They're in the drum family, and I can feel them drumming right now. They're actually in the same family as a red fish, but Man, that guy's sick. All right, we swapped to the FRED jerk shad. I believe FRED stands for fooling redfish every day. 
I think I nailed it that time. Yeah. I usually just make something up. <laughs> Finding redfish every other day. <laughs> Come on, Beast Farm, do something. Do something. The water's cleaning up a little bit as we get closer. Yeah, there's a, it's a little bit deeper. A little bump. What's with all these sticks up here? Uh, I forgot to turn on the GoPro, guys, but we got us a little snook right here. Slam the Fred. Joe is having fun in the back. <laughs> Yee! Hey, buddy. Yeah, right back in that pocket, man. Wow, you are pretty. Yeah. Check that one out, y'all. Beautiful little snook. Creamed that Fred in the jerk shad in the pink. Now, this is a cool little fish, but Rich Fishaholic is fishing the kayaks, and he actually caught a 39 inch cobia on this exact same lure this morning and we have some type of deal going for this lure right now I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'm writing it on the screen and I have it linked down below So if you guys are interested in trying out some of these lures pretty sure you're gonna get them for free check that link below All right, let's get this buddy released Later dude It's crazy how quick they blend in all of my fishing career led up to that moment right there <laughs> Catching a 12 inch snook that didn't even... Fred is fooling everything but Fred. <laughs> Redfish were not fooled by Fred today. So we kept working down this flat until we saw exactly what we were looking for. A big school of beautiful redfish. Some fish up to 35, 36 inches. But there was only one problem. We weren't the only ones looking for these redfish. There was actually a couple dolphins hanging right on the edge where they were trying to pick off one of these redfish. So these things really did not want to eat, despite our best efforts. Yeah, oh, there's still some right there. They're not. <laughs> uh, but it seems like they, like, he, the dolphin had been moving. Well, they don't, they're feeling us, too. I don't know. Bigger trout. Trying not to be a dolphin. What in the heck? We got us a grouper. Awesome. Nice, dude. I was about to say, they look a little darker. Look at that. Got us a little black grouper. That's pretty cool. Kidding me? There's a whole school of redfish out here that a dolphin is just chasing around and they won't commit to anything. But I casted where I thought I saw more and caught a little black grouper on this flat. That is really, really cool. Beautiful marbling on that guy. Pretty fish. Yeah. yeah. So we were just cruising here. Luke had cast it off the front. I saw a fish that I was like, maybe shark, maybe redfish. And I make a cast, lose it, and then Luke hooks up immediately and it was ends up, it was a redfish. Some pretty blue on its tail. Yeah, that's a good nice, dude. And, uh, got a real fish finally. The dolphins are coming uh, to check us out. Snake oh, fish. Who needs a tail? Well, he was already out. He didn't snake it. He, he was already in the area, and I cast it on you top of him because I saw a fish. You were trying to snake it. Yeah, I was trying to snake yeah, it, but he, he got it anyways. So we actually just pushed up here, kind of into the mangroves to release that redfish because a lot of times, like right now, we have dolphins that, you know, the dolphins associate humans and food. So we're going to do our best to release the fish in an area where the, at least the fish can hide. Um, we got all the mangrove structure for them to hide from the dolphin because we don't want that thing to get predated. Um, prefer the dolphin to go out and eat some mullet or something personally. All right, we got the first slam in the boat. 
A slam is a redfish, a snook, and a sea trout. If you catch a tarpon, then you get a super slam. So that's what I'm after now. But we got us a baby little redfish on the Fred, fooling redfish every day that you guys can get for free down in the link below. But pretty little fish. Beautiful. Came up and smoked it. Nice work, man. Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate you. <laughs> oh wow! I was—he you know, just stuck his tongue out into the redfish's mouth. That was wow. You guys all saw that. <laughs> all right, let's let this guy go on the mangrove side where there's no dolphins. Yep. Later, bud. Really Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Way to go, boy. Uh huh. Yeah. Cabbage key. We just pulled up to the spot called Cabbage Key. So it's lunchtime. Maybe said. we're gonna have, I don't know, what do you think? Tequila soda water, Maybe, oh, crazy. I, I you know? was thinking a Bloody Mary, maybe a margarita. Okay, I might go margarita. Matt is boys. dieting over here. Look at that sheep's head right there. Oh, That's a stud. Oh, yeah. yeah, so normally on a weekend, you can't even walk up here. You're going through people, hundreds of people out here. All of, every one of the boat slips is filled. People are just waiting in line. Yeah. You get called uh, Cheeseburger in Paradise, <laughs> and their Bloody Marys are delightful. Um, what were you saying about the trees? I mean, look at this. You can see this banyan. I mean, it's growing back. That yeah. whole thing got destroyed. This whole area was all shade. So that was this Hurricane was Ian yep. ripped out all of these trees. Yep. And they're all growing back, so they're all still alive. Just got the tops knocked off of them. I mean, look at that. These are all just beautiful trees. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm glad this place is still standing, though. Yeah. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Come on, Cheers. everyone, yeah. everyone, bring it in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we got some burger action. We got some triple tail. Uh-oh, he's, he's breaking his diet right now, eating <laughs> eating potato chips. You gotta use it for energy. Uh, uh, right I know. The abs are disappearing. <laughs> so we had reached the hottest part of the day, and we all decided that as opposed to fishing during the hottest part of the day when nothing was really gonna bite, we actually wanted to head back to Tarpon Lodge where we were staying, hit the pool for a bit, maybe take a quick snooze, and then head back out for the evening bite. So we just had a little pool time, a little nap break. Well, I took a nap and almost slept through leaving, or the boat leaving. But the wind picked up. We just swapped out Bama Beach Bone for Bearded Brad. So right. got, I don't know if that's an upgrade or a downgrade. Know. Yeah, either way. I think it was net, 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 net neutral. <laughs> but. There's going to be some fish this afternoon, so we're going to get out there. With this wind picking up, it's going to be tougher for you guys to hear, but the fish might be actually biting a little bit better. Yeah, I would learn to eat those words. The afternoon didn't actually produce much at all. I think we maybe caught a couple ladyfish and a couple small trout. And by we, I mean the other guys on the boat, because going through my footage, I don't think I caught much of anything this afternoon. I even cracked the beer, so you know it probably wasn't that good. We called it quits for the evening with hopes of a better bite in the morning. And Joe and Luke treated us to an amazing dinner back at Tarpon Lodge. In your camera. Not bad. Well, that's a new pastry. Alright, we got a little Whoa. piece of fish. Right. Asparagus. Easiest to give it to you that way. Oh, Wow, you guys are adorable. <laughs> I know. Good morning. Welcome to day two. Same crew as yesterday. The other boat, I don't think did as well as us yesterday. I think we were the superior boat, but the kayakers actually demolished us, and this dude's just blowing by us. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. <laughs> that boat just... I guess this isn't Alright. Oh my... I literally got wet. Yeah. That was crazy. Wait. All right, well, we just got waked by a local. I don't know if that was intentional or what. I think it was intentional. But we are off to try and beat Rich's massive 39-inch cobia from yesterday, which is not really massive by cobia standards, but for inshore, in a foot of water, it is the biggest fish that anyone out of our group has got. So try and beat that, and also try and upsize all of our fish from yesterday, snook, right, redfish, and trout. Delicious. Beach bum. Come on. First fish of the morning. Top water fish, top water bite. Feels good. I, you know, like hopefully trout. it's a yeah. decent trout. That'd be nice. I'm gonna back down the drag just a little bit. Just, yeah, give you want me to? Here. I can jump in the water and grab him if you want. Yeah, we do have a net. 
Oh, oh, he's... oh, drag scream in action. Oh, no. Where's the net? Captain! Oh, uh, it's the kitty! <laughs> All the oh, top water. Top water. Top water. Heck yeah! No way. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, is that a sail cat? Yeah. Dude, that's amazing. Dude, sail, sail cats are alpha predators. Dude, I'll tell you that. that. I think this is my first catfish on top of water. I, I would that say. That's pretty dope, man. <laughs> At the end of day one, the biggest redfish in the tournament was like 28 inches, caught by Rich. The biggest trout was like 14, 15 inches. No one had caught a noticeable, noticeably large one. And the biggest snook was around 21, 22 inches. So there was tons of, you know, room to grow. But our plan was to head back where we saw those big redfish and try and catch one of those solid 30 inchers. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's what we like. Got absolutely slurped up. What are you, what are you using? Jerk? Fred Jerk. Can you click on that GoPro, Joe? That doesn't have the media mod? Wow, he's charging, guys. He's charging. This one right here, brother? Yep. Yep. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, let's go that's awesome man that'll get your blood pumping yeah let's go yeah it's a red sure i don't know about all that i don't think he's that big where was he straight on this side Oh yeah, buddy. You good? He's just not happy to see us. Oh, yeah, that's a solid one, dude. <laughs> that is a solid one. Come to daddy. Oh, come to daddy. In the net. Beauty. Nice. Got a, that. It's got a little girth to it, man. Yeah, that's not a bad one at all. Heck yeah. Nice work, Ryan. Thanks, brother. Okay, let's see how long it is. Uh, it's going to be 26. Ah, <laughs> 26 and a half. Yep. Dang, Dang. Dang. Look at that. Are you, guys, are you guys opposed to me keeping one? How do you feel about keeping redfish? You don't mind it? I do like eating redfish. Right, we got boy Ryan Mori here on the board. Fred Beautiful. The jerk. Yeah, Fred the jerk, fooling redfish like this. Studs every day. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> That's a beautiful fish. You guys see, absolutely chomped it. We're pretty sure Matt had one blow up on the top water too. So these fish are definitely hungry this morning. Really, really cool fish, man. I don't get to catch him all that much in my area on the East Coast. We just don't have the habitat for him like we used to. But this one is absolutely gorgeous. Gave me a really fun fight. I love how they dog him in. And these fish are delicious too. So I think I actually might take this guy home for a little catch and cook action. Look at that. Does he have a spot on the other side? Because he's missing one here. Spotless? He spotless? We just oh, old one, one spotter. Wow. Got one, yeah. one spotter. So, I mean, a lot of you probably know this, but the reason the redfish have this spot is it's a false eye. So a predator sees that and they try and attack them in the head to, you know, kind of, um, you know, get rid of them, <laughs> try and kill them. But uh, if they get attacked in the tail, a lot of the time the red can get away. So that's that false eye. This one has no eye on this side. Um, and sometimes you see them with spots all up and down. It's a very unique, different coloration. So beautiful fish. I'm going to take a quick little picture of this guy and uh, we're going to get him on ice. They took it down. Oh, there we are. Oh, baby. Oh, we got some snook action. I stole Bummy's snook. Dang it, man. Oh, man. That thing choked it. That's too funny. <laughs> You. This thing's got some attitude. Angry. Extra angry. Damn it, that's the stuff that we were talking about earlier. We need some of this from you. Mm -mm. 
Dude, look at this thing. This, he he's got extra spunk. All righty, all righty. Why couldn't you be like 28 inches, my friends? Well, we do have the slam on all, uh, or we, we've caught a full slam on the Fred on that pink jerk shad that you guys can get for free in the link down below. But that is a beautiful specimen of a snook. Um, sorry I had to do that to you, Beach Bum. You just okay, had to steal your fish. Snake and fish. Here you go. What's up, Beach Bums? Can I, can I touch them? Dude, you can touch them. Look Ooh. at that. <laughs> Look, Look at that. That's beautiful. The redfish stopped cooperating, so we moved to a little bit of a deeper area with these buoys, and we wanted to see if we could pick off a triple tail. There was also some rock piles down in the bottom, so we dropped down some shrimp jigs just to see if anything wanted to eat. Who are you? I just casted just on the other side of the buoy. Where you feel, beach bomb? I oh, know, I didn't. Let me know if you should feel structure down there. So as soon as you, you mentioned. Not the best looking water I've ever seen. So we went offshore, kind of offshore, near shore, to try and fish some deeper stuff. See if we could find a snook deep down. Didn't happen. Now we're back in here on a new flat. Looks amazing. Lots of grass, lots of life. Pinfish everywhere, other bait fish everywhere. Seeing a lot of activity, having bites from trout. I think we just spooked a little red, so keep working our way across this flat see if we find something really good oh, that was an errant cast there we go oh yeah i think it is it looks thicker than a ladyfish from the tower from the top rope. I don't know. We'll see what we're gonna do. Um, I'm going to the left. It is a nice trout. Yeah. Can we net it? Yeah. I think it is. It looks big. Uh, he's under Joe's line. Sorry, I'm jacking up the whole boat. Or is it a snook? Oh, it's a snook. Never mind. No, you're fine. Snook on the flats. Yee! Probably our biggest bite. All right. Look at that. Nice work. There we go, from the tower. Beautiful, thank you, sir. Yep. We can pop that hook out and just let him go, let him grow. You know, some of this biggest snook I've ever seen. We used needlefish as bait. Really? Yeah, we would drop them under the pier. Mainly, I think they would work so well is because sn those snooks see everything and they're just not used to seeing a dead needlefish on the bottom. And they're like, oh, this is different. These normally, these wouldn't have a hook so in it. We are trying to fish some docks, like the one in front of me, fishing this Soul Strong Power Piran. Um, definitely love a presentation like this, any type of shrimp imitation, cast it up under a dock. These docks not only have, you know, barnacles and stuff on them, we also are in an area with plenty of seagrass, so you know there's life. Definitely gonna be some snook under some of these docks. Whether or not we get them to eat remains to be seen, but let's stay tuned, see if we can find a couple. There's a big old just black snook in there. Uh -huh. black, black backs in there, like, it looks so awesome. Yeah, they're mean. I swear their mouths are rougher too, like. <laughs> <laughs> just designed to get away. All right. We're fishing a dock in Stewart, um, just live shrimp pitching under it. We we're actually trying to catch sheep's head. That was like the goal of the day. And we just kept getting smoked by giant fish, broke off under the dock. And then I finally landed one and it was like a 15 pound blue fish. And I was like, what the heck? That's skip action. Yep. Nice. Yep. Oh. Yep. Dang, dude. Oh, that's a good fish. Yeah, buddy. Are we filming? Are we rolling right now? Oh, we are rolling. We got the skip 
and the eat dude, on you, camera. You might, you might have the biggest nut, dude. That's probably a Yes. That work. That's a good That fix. was cool. It was literally like I reeled and I thought I was snagged on bottom and then it started moving. <laughs> yeah. He's a little under slot for sure. I'm going 26. Yee hoo! -hoo. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be I think I put seven. That is a pretty snook. That is a beautiful snook. Look at that. On the power prawn. Oh, that's definitely 25. Man, we are sitting at actually 28. That's a slot fish. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, baby. Oh, she's feisty. 28 inch West Coast snook on the power prawn. Smoked it right when we skipped it under the dock. So cool. It's cool when a plan comes together, man. We're like, hey, let's go try those docks. Those look fishy. Pr definitely a presentation that we've done before in other areas, and it worked great. Let's get this butt. Beautiful fish Come back in the water. Nice and yellow. Yeah. Where there's one, there's more. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Getting them revived. There he goes. On the release. Okay, we have a last minute session. Probably 36, 37, I think. The ones that I saw on the drone. They weren't feeding on anything? Nope. No. It was 10 a.m. when we got on them, though. Yeah, we saw him after we after we boat spooked him, then a dolphin spooked him. Uh, Look at that. You just got a puffer on the power prong? On the thread. On the thread. Second to last cast. Whoever wins the largest species caught on the pink thread dirt shad. So, we're all back. A couple of the guys had to take off, but we are going to present the belt, see who had the biggest fish. Could be some surprises, not really sure. Let's see who won. Welcome to the second annual Salt Strong Affiliate Influencer Good Friends Now uh, Championship event. As you probably know, we have three different belts and the brand new slot machine rod going out to one lucky winner. So. To reiterate what we're doing, we have three belts. We have snook, trout, and redfish. We've had about a uh, day and a half to do this. And the largest redfish slot has to be a slot or bigger. Largest trout and then snook. And for this, it was kind of a anything goes. Largest or longest fish. And uh, it could have been a shark, could have been a stingray, could have been a trout. We started off with the largest Snook, and I don't remember the exact size, but it was a, an amazing catch with a skip underneath the dock on the power prong. By the way, all these had to be with artificial lures using ours, and this one had to be on the Fred the Jerk. We have Mr. Ryan Mori, the big winner! Oh, We're hoping it fits. This, I think it will fit. I've been you know, waiting for this my whole life, this moment right here, but yeah. That was absolutely epic to be able to catch that fish at the end of the day. And you know, I was worried that Rich was going to take home every single belt, but got to take one home on my own. And uh, you know, got to thank the Salt Strong boys for putting me on that dock that had that fish on it. And your that snook was pretty lucky because that was a keeper snook that we let go. Yeah, it's true. Golf club. Woo! It was nuts. Uh, how many of you guys catch? 
today alone, probably about 80. 80 in yeah. one boat in an afternoon. Trout were everywhere, but they're all small. Yeah. And so yesterday, yours truly was sitting in first place at like 16.4 inches, not pounds, <laughs> and uh, pretty puny trout. And Cameron Canner, the hostess with the mostess, came in today with a uh, what size trout? 18 and a half. 18, 18 and, and a half. half. That'll do it. Man, congratulations, dude. Is this your first championship belt ever? It is. It is. I won one in the WWE, but fishing wise, this <laughs> is. The first change. I'm surprised you didn't wear your WD, WWE uniform. You know? you, you, everybody knows me. Stone Cold Cameron. <laughs> it was the largest redfish, and actually a stud red. We've got the one and only. The guy who is out there living his name more than anyone else I know. Fish with the largest redfish. Come up and get it. Two back, years back to around, back. Come back, redfish winner. Here we go. Here we go. Put it on. Gonna do the little dance again. The little dance. <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> so we also did something unique this year. We're gonna give the slot machine rod, three hundred fifty dollar rod, and uh, it was on the longest fish. And I don't even know if half of us even like wet a line. And we're getting a group text from Rich, and he's already got a, was a thirty nine cobia. Thirty nine and a half. It's like, so what in the world? Uh, <laughs> like. Right and early first morning before anything started, and that ended up being it. Uh, we had a couple tarpon on, had some chances for sharks, but the 39 and a half inch cobia won. So totally congratulations, dude. You. That was awesome. Totally dumb luck. Well, heck of a day. Just saw it cruising, thought it was like a big red or a jack for ball, and just chucked the thread there and just nailed it right away. And right. Cameron witnessed the whole thing, which is kind of probably one of my all time favorite catches ever. Good job, dude. So guys, we got to take one home. I didn't get to take all three belts home, unfortunately. I was really hoping to, you know, just com complete the sweep. But we got the snook belt, and I think the snook belt's the sweetest because last year when we were here, not one person could win the snook belt. So I'm the first winner of this thing. It's gonna hang in my office somewhere, and uh, it's pretty darn cool. It's like a legit WWE belt. Next up in the video, we have to flay up a redfish. We have to do a catch and cook, so stay tuned for that probably going to take that back home to cook it up but man this has been an epic weekend and i thank you guys for watching this far into the video what's up guys welcome back to the east coast got our redfish here been on ice for about a day um but looking pretty good i'm excited to try this guy um because it's been quite a bit quite a while since i ate a redfish starting with our very first cut up here back towards the head scales off the knife Big, thick scales on this redfish. This is, you know, an upper slot. Really, really nice fish that I am stoked to have got to catch. Now, what I'm really disappointed about is we didn't have the opportunity to get some of those bigger redfish that we saw to actually eat. Because we saw some absolute monsters, not only with our eyes, but, you know, also captured them on the drone to really confirm that those big fish were actually there. And man, there were some freaking monsters. Welcome to the kitchen, y'all. I am whipping up a fairly quick dinner tonight because tonight is a very important evening. What's going on? So the Miami Dolphins are playing the New England Patriots. Today is Sunday, the 17th of September. So Dolphins are 1-0. Excited. They're probably going to break my heart again because they always break my heart. But right now, back to the task at hand, I guess. I am chopping up some pineapple like a four-year-old. Um, but we're essentially making a pineapple salsa that's gonna go on top of our black and red fish. So got a little bit of different stuff going on. Got some diced red onion, got a little bit of serrano pepper. Christina doesn't let me do too much because she's afraid of a little spice. Some cherry tomatoes. I'm also gonna dice up some cilantro, finish up dicing up this pineapple here. And that topped on blackened fish, I'll tell you guys what is one of my favorite ways to serve a blackened fish. Pretty self-explanatory, but 
pineapple as our base, all chopped up. We'll go in with some of that red onion. A lot of color. Some serrano pepper for some spice. Bam. And then some cherry tomato as well. Oh, a couple stragglers getting away. And just tons of color. Lastly, we're gonna do some cilantro. Christina doesn't like cilantro, but um, I said that's too bad for tonight because I like it a lot. And she said she'll suffer through. Bang. It does get everywhere though. It sticks all to your fingers. And we have one last thing to add to it. A little bit of lemon juice. Wanted lime, didn't have lime in the fridge, but we'll add some lemon juice. And that is our very easy, very simple, but very fresh pineapple salsa. So I took one of the redfish fillets. One fillet is perfect for Christina and I tonight. The other fillet we will eat tomorrow night. Looks really, really good. It's been quite a while since I've ate redfish, but basically just sliced it into moderately similar portions and made sure there was no scales on it. Now I'm going to go with my super secret blend of spices, which isn't actually that secret. If you guys have watched this channel at all when I cook, I use a very similar array of spices almost every single time that I do a fish preparation, at least when I'm doing just like, you know, a saute or a pan sear, because um, it just works and it pairs well with a lot of different things, whether I'm doing like a mango puree or this pineapple salsa, or just putting it on a sandwich, this kind of blend of spices is just my favorite overall. So salt, pepper, next up a little garlic powder, nothing too crazy, bang. And we'll go in with some paprika. Typically, I'll mess up and there'll be like one piece of fish like that with just like a giant bit of paprika, but it is what it is. It all eats the same. And then lastly, we'll do some chili powder for a little bit of spice. And I'll do the exact same thing to the other side, but I won't bore you guys with that and we'll get this in the pan. All right, so we're going into a pan with a little bit of oil. Doesn't take very long for these guys to cook up. Especially that thinner piece that's that section from down by the tail of the fish. I'm just kind of moving around, make sure there's a little bit of oil on each piece. And that'll cook pretty darn quick. A couple minutes on each side and we'll be good to go. So, like I said, going very simple. So we have a Pretty easy yellow rice. I'll go with a little bit bigger portion for me. Christina said she wanted to eat a giant dessert, so she'll get a smaller portion. What do you mean? Look at that, you got plenty. We actually have a bunch of frozen key lime pie dipped in chocolate on a stick from our key strip that have just been sitting in our freezer. So we're gonna down a couple of those later. We will go with just some basic green beans. I actually throw a little bit of red pepper flake on mine, but since Christina is, Christina is a weenie, she won't get any red pepper flake on hers. So we have this piece of fish. Christina said I wasn't allowed to have this one. She said this one was for her. So like a good boyfriend, I said, yes, ma'am. And then we have one for me. And finally, we go in with the most beautiful part of the recipe, some pineapple salsa topping. All those colors. It works really well with the blackening too, because this is mainly a sweet salsa with the pineapple base and the tomatoes are really sweet, but the serrano gives it just enough kick to make it interesting. Me? Yeah. Yes, it's spicy. <laughs> but I'll eat less, so. It's worth it. I actually, that. I think it's literally so good, um, but she doesn't like spicy. And I'll tell you what, the pepper definitely is a little bit spicier than I expected it to be. So Christina's not the happiest with me right now, but you're still enjoying it other than the spiciness. Yeah. Cheers, a little key lime pie on a stick dipped in chocolate. 
And the Dolphins, um, you guys can't really see it, but uh, the Dolphins going three and out. So they're up 10-0. Thank you for being my co-star in the kitchen. And thanks to you guys for watching this video. And a huge thank you to Salt Strong for putting together the event and having us all out. Go ahead and check that first link in the description if you guys want to try out the lure that caught a bunch of different fish. It was the, the Fred and a Jerk Shad. Um, pretty sure you guys can get that for free. Link down below. Um, definitely worth trying out. And I'll see you guys. Oh, these are good? All right. I'm excited. I will see you guys in that next one.